Hello, uh, in this video I will talk about this three five digit modifier. So in this modifier we can define uh, the dynamic uh, properties for the object which you simulate and uh, first roll out is this properties roll out and here you can define the type of object. There are four types. This uh, uh, first one is dynamic. Dynamic meaning that object will start to fall down and if it's animated, uh, bullet will continue its animation if you start. So let's say if you start at frame, say 15, the object won't just fall to the ground, it will continue its original animation. And the next one is dead object. Uh, if you already used Trifire before, you know that this uh, kind of dynamic object, which do not fall, they are not affected by gravity, and uh, uh, they can be pushed. Uh, they uh, move only while they are pushed. So let's let me create. So let's uh, set this uh, rock as uh, dynamic. This column will be dead object. And I will start loop mode. So you can see now it was um, so these fragments may be animated. They get pushed, but after um, they get they got this push, they do not fall. Uh, you can activate them, and later I will show you how to turn them into full dynamic. But right now you just uh, and see what it how it looks how it works. Uh, next one is kinematic. So kinematic object, okay, I will reset animation. Kinematic objects are objects which are not affected by uh, dynamic, but they can affect other dynamic objects. So if I will set here kinematic and start simulation again, you can see it just go, just uses this keyframe animation, pushes everything, and uh, it do not fall to the ground. Okay, and the last one is static, and static is kind of kinematic object, but uh, this are the object which do not have any animation, and advantage of using static, because only this mode can use original uh, mesh as simulation mesh, so it might be very noisy, very high poly mesh, uh, the rest of the types will create special simulation mesh, uh, but only, only this a static one can use uh, its original geometry for simulation, but uh, it cannot have any cannot have can uh, can be animated. Okay, that's enough. This is types. Um, the next group of properties is this mesh. These are here you can define a mesh which bullet will use during simulation. There are three types. The first one is convex, and this is. Uh, uh, the fastest uh, simulation mesh. Uh, it perfect. It's perfect for Voronoi fragments because they are mostly convex. Uh, only uh, fragments which are on the surface might be concave, but uh, it's not a big deal. So if you want to create uh, the fastest uh, simulation, which will not have uh, good quality, you can use this convex mesh type. Second one is low poly concave. In this case, you can use some concave uh, meshes. But simulation will be uh, slower, but quality will be better. And the third type is high poly concave mesh. Uh, this is the slowest simulation type, uh, but quality will be uh, will be the best. And uh, I'll launch, I won't show you uh, the difference because I have here mostly uh, one fragment, so um, doesn't matter which rule you will set. Uh, if bullet will see that fragment is convex, it will use convex mesh for it. And uh, next group, it's very important group, is fraction. And this, uh, there are three types of fraction: this elements, clusters, and uh, object. So by default, it's uh, elements, and in this uh, case, it just simulates all elements as separate um, objects. I will set this column to dynamic. So well, you already saw that, but let's see it again. Every element is simulated separately, and that's it. Uh, okay, now let me set uh, the second one is clusters. In this mode, it uh, clustering a uh, group of elements into one uh, simulated object. So, in this case, you need to use this clusters group here. Here, you can define the amount of clusters. Uh, percent of debris. Debris are the elements which are not be included into cluster. So let me set here zero by default and seed, random seed. If you don't like 
how uh, your clusters were grouped, you can change seed to get different results. So let me set here, let's say 10. And now I will start loop mode and you will see how it works. So now there are just 10 clusters. And during loop mode, you can start increasing them. You can start uh, set, you can set here, let's say 20. And at next try, there will be 20 clusters. Let's set more. Even more. So the, the more amount of clusters, the less they will be. Uh, okay, now let me set here, let's say two, and show you what mean the breeze. So now you can see there are just two clusters. So I can set here 10% debris, and now you will see that about 10% of your uh, elements were not included into the cluster. You can set more. So let's set me, let's set amount of clusters to 10 and amount of debris, let's say to five. So uh, here you without debris, everything as you can see is very, well, very uh, artificial. So increasing the breeze, you can add, we can make it more natural. So there will be some dynamic debris. Okay. Now let me set here, let's say 50. Maybe even higher. So as you can see, you can instantly in real time change all those properties and see and they get um, the simulation you want. Okay, now let me turn it off. And uh, the last one is this object mode. In this case, uh, uh, all elements will be simulated as one object. That's all. Uh, it's so aggressive because I have this rock uh, schematic. Let me set it to dynamic as well. Okay. So here you can see uh, uh, whole column simulates as one uh, solid object. And let me increase uh, increase density of the rock so you will see it better. Okay, just one object. So uh, that's it about. Uh, Fractions and the last uh, route is this material route. That's very simple. You, you can let me set it to fraction. Here you can define this material properties, and the, uh, these are very important properties because, as you saw before, uh, if my rock, let's say I have, uh, let me select my rock now. Hey, hey. Okay, so if I will set its density to low, very low density, you can see now it doesn't uh, uh, go through this column. Can't even demolish it. So let me set it to that object here. Reset, start again. Here you can see how uh, impact, uh, how impact is not um, very, very, very light. Well, and uh, changing density can change your simulation significantly. And the same true for the other objects. So if I will increase density here as well, it again will be not so easy to be demolished. And uh, the uh, fr friction, restitution parameters, solidity, this solidity parameter works only in case you use demolition. I will show you in another video. And finally, there is this variation spinner, which allows you to add some variation to all of these uh, uh, values. Because in case you simulate hundreds of elements, you don't want to all of them have exactly the same properties because it looks very artificial. You can use this uh, variation so every element will get its own density, fr friction, restitution, and solidity. Okay, I guess that's enough about this properties rollout. Uh, in other videos, I will show you other features. Okay, thank you.